we finally get to the point where we can decipher the most interesting feature of a PPF curve, which is the bowed out thing, right? And why it's bowed out? What is the economic intuition behind it? Could it be bowed in? Okay. Now here, uh, let's go back to the whiteboard and uh, let me use a very simple example to show you um, why is that the case? Okay. Now, in the previous video, we already said that in economics, the bottom shape of PPF simply says says that the opportunity cost is increasing. In other words, when we move from A to B to C all the way to D, for each potato we gain we have to give up more and more cards, right? Now here, to help us understand this bout up shape, um, I already created a table on the whiteboard. Um, this is a hypothetical example, okay? And in this example, um, let's see, we use um, labor, or the walkers um, as an example of productive resources. Okay? And suppose in this hypothetical economy, we can divide all the walkers into three groups equally. Okay? Group one, two, and three. Uh, what we're gonna look at here is their scales. Okay? Uh, suppose group one uh, consists of all of these very talented farmers. So they know the best way of farming. They have very strong farming skills. Okay, so let's put a check mark here. And um, group number three are all of these talented mechanics. So they know the best way, the most efficient way, working in front of the machines or assembly lines. Okay, but they don't really like farming. They're they're not very good farmers. So let's put a check mark here. Group number three are, uh, you know, they have a very strong mechanic skills. Okay. Uh, group number two is kind of mediocre or average. In other words. When we compare um, group number two with number one, um, their farming scales are not good as good as uh, group number one. But their mechanic scales are better than those in group number one. Okay. Uh, Similarly, when we compare group number two with number three, we find that the workers in the second group um, have a stronger farming skills than those in number three, group number three. But uh, the workers in group number two have relatively weaker skills, um, mechanic skills, than those in number three. Okay. Now here, let's go back and look at the um, movement along the PPF uh, from A all the way to D. Now at point A, we find that in this economy, every worker works in the auto factory, right? Because it produces zero potatoes. Okay, so all three groups are working in the auto factories. Later, when the economy decides to move from A to B, in other words, they want to give up some amount of cars to be able to get some potatoes. Among these three groups, which one the economy would like to ask them to leave auto factory and go produce potatoes? It got to be group number one, right? Because we said in that group, you can find all of these talented farmers and they hate producing cars. They don't like these 
assembly lines or machines, right? They want to produce cars. Uh, I'm sorry, they want to produce potatoes in the field. So they're going to leave the auto factory and go to the potato field. And when they start producing potatoes, the economy, as you could imagine, will produce a lot of potatoes. Okay? But only sacrifice a, a, a small number of cars. Because these farmers, when they leave the auto factory, it's not going to hurt auto output that much. But it's going to um, boost the potato output. Right? Using the sem seminar logic, you can figure out from B to C, group 2 will leave auto factory and join um, the group number 1 in the potato field, producing potatoes. Right? And um, from C to D, we find that eventually everybody has to leave the auto factory and go to potato field, right? Including our best talented mechanics, okay? So that's why, you know, from C to D, we see a huge decline in auto um, um, output but only a small increase in potato output. Because now, even the best mechanics are leaving the auto factory. It hurts the auto uh, production a lot. But when they go to the potato field, they don't really know how to farm. Okay? And they don't enjoy doing that, so the potato output will increase by just a little bit. All right? So this is exactly the economic intuition behind the bout out curve uh, or bout out PPF. Now the opposite would be like this. Now here I'm not gonna label um, just you know to help us save our time. So you can still put the cars on the uh, vertical and uh, uh, potatoes on the horizontal. Now the opposite case would be the bout in, right? Bout in would be like this. Now, if you believe the PPF should be bought in, you simply say that, you know, when uh, the economy moves from A to B, now suppose here is A, okay, and here somewhere um, along the curve is B. When the economy is moving from A to B, um, it asks the group number three to leave the auto factory before the other two groups and go produce potatoes. Again, it doesn't make sense, right? The group number three are the best mechanics. They should stay in the auto factory producing cars. Okay, So that's why we believe the PPF should be about out curve. All right. Now, up to this point, we simply finished uh, the discussion about the shape of B, uh, PPF. We said it's downward sloping, it's a curve, it's bowed out. Okay, behind each graphical feature, there's an economic um, intuition. Okay, so we talk about um, uh, scarcity, we talk about the efficiency, opportunity, cost. Okay, and um, you can also uh, pull out the in-class worksheet I posted on Moodle and uh, get more exercises about this, especially the calculation of opportunity cost. It could be tricky, okay? So when you see me doing that, um, you may find it's quite straightforward, but when you start doing that, you may find it is tricky, especially, um, you know, what goes on the top, what goes to the bottom, okay? Um, let me go to um, oops. let me show you um, you know what we did last time okay so when we did the opportunity cost calculation here um, the numerator must be the good or the service that has been given up because remember, opportunity cost means we give up something, right? What goes to the bottom as a denominator would be 
um, the goods or the service we gain. Okay, because we used we divided by that to be able to figure out the opportunity cost per unit. Okay, again, the numerator is what we gave up. Okay, all right. So um, on the next video, we're gonna start talking about the shift of the PPF.